Hey everybody, welcome back to Heartland Productions. Over the last few months, people have asked me over and over again for a recipe for my biga dough to make pizza. So today I'm gonna to make a very simple, this is gonna be step one of probably two or three steps. I wanna make it as easy as possible to follow. Making pizza dough, it's a tricky thing. You can follow any recipe. You can go and f try to find the best recipe possible from a pizzaiolo in Naples, and you try to replicate it somewhere else. It's never gonna turn out exactly the same. It all depends on where you're located, what type of water, your temperature of water, what type of flour, what type of yeast, what's the temperature outside, what's the temperature inside. There's so many variables to the chemistry of making good pizza dough is that it's almost impossible to replicate exactly following the recipe. So use this recipe as a baseline. Start it. If you find out that the dough's a little too wet where you live, maybe you live in Florida and it's very humid, you might need to take a little bit, add a little more flour or a little bit less water to make it less hydration. So this recipe is going to be, it's about a 70% hydration. So that means that there's 70% of the entire dough is made up of water. So it's gonna be 70% hydration, and then we are using a 30% biga starter. So the ingredients that we're mixing today for step one of this is gonna be 30% of the total recipe. So this is just the starter. In step two, I'm gonna show you how to make the actual final dough. If you're not familiar with biga dough, biga is basically a pre-fermented starter. It's similar to sourdough or poolish. It's biga is just the Italian version of those. So there are some differences to it, but it has a lot of similarities. So let's get started. As I mentioned, this is gonna be a multiple part video. This is gonna be just part one, making the Biga starter for the dough. So don't forget to subscribe now to the channel below. Hit the notification bell also, so you're notified when my newest video is released also. So what you're gonna need is that, I always recommend making a double batch. Don't make just a single batch. Even if you're gonna cook like two or three pizzas, make a double batch just because it's easier because you're gonna have to do all this work, get all this prep done. If you do a double batch, I'll show you in another video how to freeze the pizza too. You can freeze the dough and have it ready for pizza night. So I always do a double batch and it makes it easier too when you're buying flour because it usually comes in 2.2 pound bags or one kilo. So this is the size it comes in. So I recommend if you're gonna do a double batch, always buy two. So you're gonna have one set aside for step two. It's the reason I like making it this double batch too, because like step two, it basically you don't have to measure anything. It's exactly one kilo of flour, so you can just dump the whole bag in in step two. But for the biga, you're gonna use almost all of this to make the starter. You're gonna use around 400 grams for the biga starter, which is gonna give you about 100 grams extra in this initial bag, which you're going to use to help flour the countertop and then to add any flour when you're making the final dough too, in case it's still a little too sticky. So it ends up working out just about perfectly if you buy two bags of type 00 flour. So for step one, it's very simple. In reality, Neapolitan pizza only has a few ingredients. It only has flour, water, yeast, and salt. Those are the only ingredients in traditional uh, Neapolitan pizza dough. So for the biggest starter today in step one, all we're gonna need is the, the flour, the water, and then instant dry yeast. And then you're also gonna need an airtight container. I use these Rubbermaid ones because they snap on and off, they have great lids. I'm gonna go ahead and do the starter, mix it directly in this because it makes it easier. It, you wash less dishes, it's all ready to go. I mix it right in this, I weigh it in this, and then I pop it right in the refrigerator so it's less dishes and it's super easy to clean up. You're also going to need a measuring cup with, for water. You're gonna need something that holds at least, I like to have the two cup one, it gives you a little more margin of error. You need a bowl for the flour, something small. It's not gonna to be too much. It's only gonna be a little bit less than a bag for this part. You might need some measuring cups just to get the yeast to measure it out right. And you definitely need a scale that measures out in grams. If you're doing using cups and things like that, it is not gonna be as exact. So I would definitely recommend this. I mean, on Amazon, you can get one of these for $10, $20. So it's well worth it. You use this all the time. That way you get your dough nailed in exactly. So the very first step you wanna do is that you wanna fill up your measuring cup with one cup 
of water. One cup's gonna be just a little bit more than what you need. And notice I'm taking this out of the refrigerator so it's gonna be chilled. You do wanna get this up to room temperature. So if you're in a hurry, you can also put this in the microwave for about 30 seconds and that'll get it up to room temperature. I like to do this step first because it allows the water to kind of warm up a little bit too. We filled our water up. We have about one cup. This is going to be the perfect amount of water because we're going to need about 200 grams of water. So two or one cup should be just around 240, 250 grams. So that'll give you a little bit of extra just in case you need it. Again, if it's out of the refrigerator, the water's cool. You can microwave it for about 30 seconds maximum. You don't want the water hot because it'll kill the yeast, but if it's too cold, it won't activate properly either. So you want to be able to just kind of put your finger in it, touch it. It should be just slightly warm. Room temperature is ideal. Now we're going to get our container. It needs to be an airtight container, something you can put in the refrigerator. Um, this is a 2.3 liter, 9.6 cups. This is what this Rubbermaid size is. Uh, this is ideal. I like this because the shape, because it slides into the shelves of the refrigerator easily. So again, I like to use this to mix and measure everything. That way it's less washing for me. So let's turn our scale on. Okay, then we're going to set it on there empty. So if you're not familiar with using a scale, you always set it on empty. Then you hit the zero out button again and it sets it to zero. So then you know exactly how much water. So again, I'm going to pour it in until it hits 200 grams. Perfect, 200 grams. Now we're ready to add the yeast. I'm trying to simplify this recipe a lot. You're gonna see a lot of people often, um, they're going to take the exact temperature of the water, they're gonna take the exact temperature of everything. I'm trying to simplify this. So now we have our 200 grams of water. Now we're gonna measure out 10 grams of dry yeast. So again, we're gonna turn the scale on. It's at zero. We're gonna set an empty bowl. We're gonna zero it out again. Now we're going to measure 10 grams of dry instant yeast. Perfect. Ended up being almost exactly one full tablespoon. You can see it's at 10 grams. Perfect. Now we're going to incorporate the yeast into the water. We're done for this for a second. I like to do this step next. It lets the yeast kind of get all incorporated into the water. It's a very simple step. I take the yeast. Again, this is the bowl we're going to use to do everything. So I'm going to sprinkle the yeast in. Kind of make sure it all gets wet. Everything's out. It's completely empty. And we're going to let it just sit like that for a couple minutes. Kind of really incorporate and soak in with the water. Okay, so we're going to set that aside and we're going to measure the flour out. Let's go ahead. We're going to need 400 grams of flour. So let's zero the scale out. Put an empty bowl. Okay, now we're gonna zero it out. And like I said, open up one of the bags of flour. We are using type 00 flour. This is better for pizza making, especially Neapolitan because it's higher gluten level. And there are different variations, but this one is good because it, it's great for high hydration. So when you're using high percentages of water and you're gonna be cooking in a, a pizza oven at high heat, you really need this type of flour. You're not gonna have the results that you're expecting. So let's go ahead and measure out. As I mentioned before, using one whole bag for step one is great because you're going to have about 100 grams left over, which you're going to need for step two. Almost there. So another important part of the puzzle, kind of another important... So another important piece you really need to understand is that nothing we're doing is going to be very hard or complicated. It just takes time. So it takes enough time to be able to ferment properly, to be able to create a Neapolitan pizza dough using the biga, and it's gonna help make a more digestible dough. The dough's gonna break down easier when you eat it. You're not gonna feel as bloated. So, and it just makes a more airy, a very light dough. You get that crunchiness on the outside, but the soft and doughy in the middle. So having a pre-fermented dough and letting it ferment for at least 48 hours is very critical to having phenomenal, very high quality Neapolitan pizza dough. Um, so regarding the timing, you really need to prepare for this too. So if you wanna have pizza on Friday night, let's say at 5 p.m., you need to make the biggest starter. So this is the step one. You need to do it at noon on Wednesday. So 
this is going to be made today. So let's say we're having pizza on Friday. So make this at noon on Wednesday, create the dough. You're going to put it in the refrigerator. It's going to sit for 48 hours. So then on noon on Friday, then you're going to step part, start step two to have it all ready to go for 5 PM to make pizzas on Friday. I'll put all this down in the description too, so you don't have to memorize it all. Again, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch step two of making the final dough. So now the fun part, we are done with the scale completely. We'll put this away. We don't need this anymore. Now we have our water with the yeast in it. It's kind of made a slurry. So you can see this now there's a little bit right here on the corner. So what I'm going to do, is I kind of just stir it up a little bit with my hand. I go around the edges to make sure there's no clumps, make sure it's all nice and liquidy. You can see that now, basically like you want to get all the clumps out. Obviously make sure you wash your hands before you do this. All right, now it's perfect. All the yeast is incorporated. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the flour. This is the fun part. You want to add just a little bit of flour. Add a little bit at a time. This is the step where you'll notice if you use just all purpose flour or bread flour, you're not going to get the same effect. It's not going to clump up properly. So this is where I just start mixing it with my hand a little bit, getting it all incorporated in good. I'm going to keep adding flour too. Go ahead and add a little bit more, stir it with my hands. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the rest. Move it around with your fingers, kind of put your hands like this and go around. And you want to get, make sure you get all the flour, kind of get out of the corners and it's going to start clumping up. You know, you're doing it right. If you see all these clumps, it's going to make these little clumps like this. That's exactly what you want to see. Again, make sure you get the corners. You don't want any just loose flour. So go ahead and get the corners good. And this, you're doing this gently. You don't want to crush it. You want to just use your fingers like this and just kind of make circular motions. And get all the corners. You want to make sure you get as much of the moisture absorbed into the flour. All right, this is looking great. Now see how you all these clumps? Again, if you use bread flour or all purpose flour, it just won't clump up the same and you won't get the exact same results. Okay, I'm just going to go around the corners one more time. Perfect. All right, that's good. Now you kind of want to get as much off your fingers as possible. You don't want to waste any of it. It looks good. So this is the biggest starter. We're almost done. Um, so it's all ready to go now. We finished the starter. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on it, push it down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set this out on the countertop for one hour to kind of let it kind of start kickstarting to let the fermentation start. It helps to be at room temperature for the initial part. It helps the yeast start activating and really start the fermentation process before we refrigerate it. So this is going to set out for one hour on the countertop. Then we're going to place it in the refrigerator. Okay, it's been one hour. Now we're gonna put our biggest starter into the refrigerator. It's gonna cold ferment for 48 hours. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. You do not wanna miss step two when we're gonna actually take this out and make our final dough. So that was step one of how to make your biggest starter. Again, it was a 30% Biga starter. It's going to cold ferment in the refrigerator for 48 hours and it's going to be ready to make step two or the final dough after that 48 hours of cold fermentation. Don't forget to subscribe. Go ahead and hit the notification bell. You do not want to miss step two. Thank you very much for watching and look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>